Hello everyone! Welcome to today's video. <laughs> Got a lot of busy traffic going on, but I'm here picking some elderberry. Elderberry grows wild in a lot of places, and uh, always remember if you do pick elderberry that you know exactly what you're picking. Um, the dark colors, if they look like a grape, they're going to be great, but if they look red and bright, then uh, run away in fright. You definitely don't want to eat those. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick some elderberries and I'll be back and show you guys what we've got. Welcome back. My elderberries I had put in the fridge, so they've just been kind of chilling out there for a couple days. Now we need to remove all of the stems. You definitely want to remove all the big stems. They don't really have a use in this, especially if you're going to be making a jam or a jelly. You definitely want to make sure that you just get the berries, so you don't want to have any of these little stems in there. Um, I'm just going to be making a juice, so it doesn't really bother me that much to leave just these fine little stems in there, because I'm going to be straining everything out anyway. You can go ahead and pull the berries off by hand, or you can stick the berries in the freezer and use a fine tooth comb like this to gently just pull those berries off and then you'll be left with just the plain berries and no stems. This method works really well for that. I'm going to finish up processing these up and removing the big stems and then I'll show you what you can do from there. I had a really good harvest of elderberries, so now what I'm going to do with my very large stock pot is I'm going to put my stove on high and let my mixture of water and berries come to a rolling boil and then I'll turn it down to where it will be about medium heat or so. And this is going to need to cook for about an hour, so if you have one cup of berries make sure you add in one cup of water and you don't need to watch me stir this thing for a whole hour so we will come back as soon as this is finished cooking off and then I'll show you guys what you can do from there when you are making your juice you want to make sure that you stir it every five to ten minutes or so make sure everything is well mixed together um, I have had my elderberry juice cooking for quite a long time much longer than I had expected and because my pot is so big, I'm going to be doing this in two different batches. So let's get going. So the very next step that you want to do is make sure that you start to strain all your elderberries and even some of the wild haired stems. You want to drain all of that off. Grab some kind of a bowl and get a strainer and it works perfectly. Now keep in mind this is still very, very hot so do not splash yourself because that will burn. And to make sure that we get all of those goodness from those berries, I like to just press with my bowl and just kind of smash those little berries up. So that way I get the absolute most goodness from my elderberry juices I possibly can. And it also makes the best use of my elderberries. When you are finished with this project, you can actually add your elderberries into a compost pile if you want to, or you can just toss them out. It's really up to you. Now when you crush and strain your berries like I just did, you will tend to break open the little seeds, little seed pods of those elderberries, so you will get a little bit of some seeds in there. So I like to take just a very fine wire strainer and another bowl and just very carefully pour my juice over that strainer and this will remove all of those seeds and here is our finished product of elderberry juice got about a gallon and a half of this wonderful juice. Let it uh, cool overnight, let it sit in my fridge, then poured it through a funnel because pouring from a really big container into these 
small mouth containers is really difficult without making a huge mess. So use a funnel. It does make a world of difference for you. Also another thing I might add is uh, elderberries. You don't want to eat them raw. You definitely want to cook them before you use them because they will make you have a stomach ache if you eat too many of the raw uncooked berries. I have a little bit of this juice set aside. This is what I'm going to use to add into my raw local honey. Now I did heat this up a little bit and you want to do that in a double boiler so you just heat it just slightly. You don't want to cook it because it will lose all of its raw food benefits if you do cook it. So make sure that it's a little bit more fluid. It will be much easier to stir that way. I've got about four ounces of raw local honey. I'm just going to add about a tablespoon in there, maybe two. Then I'm going to go ahead and stir it in with my spoon. This makes it really easy to incorporate all of the wonderful properties of the elderberry in with your raw local honey. And we're going to stir this in really, really well. It will thin it out so it makes it a little bit more of a, a syrup there. And it's one of the reasons why I liked doing the juice. Now if you do drink the juice, you might want to add some kind of a sweetener to it, like honey or stevia, because um, the elderberries are very tart. So you might want to keep that in mind. And this is how we make our elderberry syrup. If you like this video, you can come back for more wonderful tips and tricks later on. And I invite you to come on back because we've got some great stuff to share with you. Have a great one, everyone, and I'll see you guys later. Bye now.